Welcome to our first official section in this course. And of course, before we get started with the actual editing process, I think that it's really important to help you familiarize yourself with the layout and the basic functionality of Final Cut Pro. Now, if you already fancy yourself a Final Cut Pro, you've already got experience with the program, feel free to skip ahead to the next section where we dive into the rough cut of editing and creating a project. But if you're new to Final Cut or you just want a bit of a refresher, then stick around and I'll walk you through the basics. So what I have here is a blank Final Cut. This is like if you had just downloaded the application, opened it for the first time, this is kind of what you would see. If you've used other video editing applications, some things might look familiar, but there are quite a few things about Final Cut that make it different. And those are a lot of the reasons why I really love it personally. So here's our basic layout. And the first thing you notice is that there's three main windows. Up here in the top left, you have your browser window. This is where you're going to be able to see all of the clips and all of the media and select your titles. Basically anything that you think you might want to add into your project or select from or has been added to your project, all of that is going to be added right there. The window next to that is the preview window or the player window or the program, whatever you want to call it. It's where you can actually watch stuff. So when you're editing your project, this is where you'll be able to see that. If you want to preview a piece of footage or a graphic or something, that's where it will show up. That's where you're just previewing and, and sort of seeing everything. And then down here, the bottom half of the screen, this is your timeline. This is your workspace where you're actually assembling everything that goes into your project. Those are the three main things that you're going to be constantly kind of bouncing between as you work on a project. But there are, of course, a lot more finer points. So let's start here up at the top and just sort of go through everything at at least a very basic introduction level. We probably don't need to go into the total deep depths of everything Final Cut can do. But the basics up here, we have this little downward facing arrow. This is to import footage. We will talk about how to do that. I do it in a weird way and I will explain why later. You have the option to hide your keyword editor. And then this little icon right here is very, very important. This is basically anything that Final Cut is currently working on. So background tasks. If you click on that, you will bring up this window that shows you that, or you can always just press Command 9, and it will bring up your background task window. Right now, nothing is happening. My Final Cut is doing nothing, <laughs> so there's nothing there. But if you add an effect to a clip or you need to render your footage or you're exporting something, you will be able to see everything that Final Cut Pro is currently working on. This is a very important thing to sort of keep an eye on, not necessarily the background tasks window, but just this little thing up here, it will move and sort of turn into a progress circle whenever you're working on something or whenever it's working on something. And that's important to let you know if you're looking at something that's been fully rendered or not. And depending on the computer that you're using, if that's really busy, you might notice some slowed down performance. If you have a really new super fast computer, it might not matter. If you're using an older computer, you probably don't want to do much while this is active. Also, Huge benefit to Final Cut Pro. One of my absolute favorite things about it is that it auto saves. So you never have to worry about saving your project as you're working on it. It will just do that for you. Even if the program crashes or your power goes out or whatever, you can just open up Final Cut again and pick up where you left off. So that means when you're done working on something, you can just close the application, but it is always a good idea just to make sure this little status background task indicator isn't doing anything before you close everything out. It won't really hurt anything if you close it while it's busy, but just to keep everything as intact as possible, that's a good thing to do. On the right side of the top bar, we have a few different options. This lets you show or hide the browser, which is where you can see everything. This lets you show or hide your timeline. And then this other option here is the inspector. And as you might expect, we'll be talking about that a little bit later. And then you've got your export options. So when you have a project that's ready to export, I don't have anything, so I can't click that. That's where you can decide how you want to export it if you don't want to just press Command E. This little section over here is your sidebar, and this little clapper slate is going to let me look at all of my directories, all of my projects, all of my libraries, just to sort of see where everything is, find all my media and all my files. The next option over it will let me browse photos, music, sound effects, and stuff that are on my computer. Final Cut does have a sound effect library built in, which is pretty decent, but of course there are lots and lots of sound effect libraries online too. We'll talk about all that. And then you've got titles and generators. Titles are exactly as you would expect. That's where you can choose all different titles you might want to add in. And generators are basically video generators. We'll be using these as we work through a project, but some of them are really, really helpful, especially just like this custom one is just blank colored video, whatever color you want it to be. 
we're going to be using a lot of that in our editing process. In your preview window, you have the option to choose how much you want to zoom into your project. I usually select fit so that way the whole project is just fitting in whatever size the window is. And the view option lets you select a bunch of different things, ways that you can interact with and view your media. We'll be using that too as we go through. Below your preview window, you do have some other options. These little arrows will let you preview in full screen. So if you want to play back your project just in full screen, you can do that there. This shows you your audio meters. They're very small audio meters. Here's your timer, your duration. You can see the time and the frames of everything. This little icon here will let you adjust the timing of clips. This little magic wand lets you play with certain enhancements on your clips, and this lets you transform that. We'll be using all that, so don't worry if that doesn't make sense right now. Index is a very cool option that helps you keep things organized. We've got different ways to select how clips interact. To be honest, I personally don't use these all that often because I kind of just do the same thing all the time. This next icon, which looks like just a regular mouse pointer, is hugely important. And if I click this little downward icon, you will see all of the basic tools for Final Cut Pro. We'll be going into these in more detail in just a few minutes. But the really important thing to pay attention to are the letters next to each one because those are the default keyboard shortcuts. You can just tap that letter to go to that tool, which means as you get used to Final Cut Pro, you'll be like, you know, very quickly switching back and forth between things. The next little arrows over here help you transition between different timelines, different projects, and then you've got your counter, your selected clip, your project duration. We have some options over here that involve sort of how you interact with your timeline, things like skimming and stuff, and I'll show you all that in just a second. And then these two little icons here are very important. The first one are going to be your effects. So if you ever want to add an effect to a clip, whether that's audio or video, You'll see here's all the video effects, and if I scroll down, now here's all of the audio effects. And the next one to that are transitions. So that's where all the transitions are if you want to play with transitions between clips. And then right here, I have my audio meters turned up. I'll be explaining this again, but if you press Shift Command 8, those turn on and off. By default, those aren't there, and I think that is ridiculous. You should never, ever, ever, ever be editing a project in any video editor without being able to monitor your audio. So. If you don't see those, you can press Shift Command 8 and it will bring up those. For some reason, when Final Cut first starts, usually they're like really, really big, uh, which is fine, but if you're limited on screen real estate, you can make them a little smaller and a little slimmer. To show you a few more of the basics, I'm gonna open up a recent project that I was working on so we can kind of interact with it a little bit differently. So here's my timeline. Now you can see how everything, you know, all of my clips are here. I can, you know, Command Plus to zoom in, Command Minus to zoom out and sort of see how everything is interacting. All of the clips that have, you know, pictures on them, those are my video clips, and all the ones that are just sound waves are just audio clips. Most of the time when you bring in a clip, it's going to have video and audio, and then it's up to you if you wanna detach that or not. Let's go between these tools again. I clicked down over here, and there were all of these tools right here. What we can do here is trim is going to let me trim this clip. You can kind of see here I'm pulling this little gray blank video, and then I'm also extending this video clip here. I'm not changing the length of the project, but I'm trimming into those adjoining clips. The position tool is very interesting, so we're gonna save that to last. Range selection means that you can just select part of a clip or part of an audio clip. This is very helpful if say you had part of a clip where just this little bit of audio is too loud and you want to adjust it or you want to adjust a music level, you can just adjust just that part of the clip right there. Our blade tool is one of the most common ones. That's going to let you cut a clip and add in you know, transition points right there. Zoom will let you zoom. But of course, like I just showed, you can do Command Plus and Command Minus. I find that to be significantly faster. The hand tool is kind of a, a weird one. I'm not honestly sure why it's there, but it essentially lets you just grab the timeline and move it around so that way you can sort of just move things around. To be honest, if you have a trackpad or a mouse, I don't know why you'd want to use that. I don't, I don't think I've ever used the hand tool, so we'll just go back to the pointer. Now the position tool, like I said, is a very interesting one. One thing that sets Final Cut Pro apart from other video editing applications is what's called the magnetic timeline. This is something that when it was introduced back in 2012, really caused kind of a commotion. It was controversial in the world of video editing. Since then, it's proven to be a really great feature, but it can take some adjusting to if you're coming from a different application. It's definitely something that has helped me become incredibly fast when editing with Final Cut, and I it's one of the things I love about it. Like, I don't wanna use something that doesn't have a magnetic timeline at this point. 
But basically, in a lot of other editing software, what is typical is that you can just sort of move your clips wherever you want them. You can just sort of, if I wanted this clip to be right here, I could just put it there and it will stay there. But in Final Cut, if I let this clip go, it's gonna snap right over there. It's like magnetically attracted to the other clip here. So your timeline is sort of always together there. If I go, if I press B and go to the blade tool and I cut out this part of a clip, now I'm gonna press A, click on that, delete it, See how it just snapped together there? That's the magnetic timeline. In general, it's something that helps you edit very, very, very quickly. However, sometimes you really might have a specific purpose. Like let's say right here at the exact 10 minute mark, I want this clip to start. But if I move it here, it's just going to keep snapping back. So there are a few ways to get around that, but the position tool is an easy one. So if I press P, I can get to the position tool, and now I can drag my clip where I want it, let it go and it's going to stay there. And as you probably noticed, Final Cut has added in this little gray thing here. This light gray square is nothing. It's just blank space on the timeline, but you can attach stuff to it. So you can attach video clips or audio clips to it or put things next to it. You can extend it and shorten it. It's basically just blank space on the timeline. And then the last thing that I wanna cover in the basics is the inspector. So let's inspect the inspector and all the gadgets within. If you click on anything on your timeline, whether it's video, audio, title, anything, then you can go up and click on the inspector icon here. Whenever I'm editing, this is open all the time. I never have this closed. So for the rest of the course, you're pretty much always just gonna see that open. And this lets you then dive in and really adjust that specific clip. So this is something I just added to this project, so we can delete that. If I go to a clip that was actually in the project, now you'll see that some changes have been made to it. So all of these blue check boxes mean that things have been added to it. For example, if I uncheck color board and color wheels, this is basically what the footage looked like directly out of my camera. It looks fine, but I added in a little bit of color correction so that way the colors pop in a way that I like. Uh, I transformed it a little bit originally out of the camera, kind of messed up when I was filming and the camera was like a little bit crooked. So if you see the line of my desk, it's a little crooked. So I zoomed in and rotated a little bit to make it framed really nicely. If you add an effect to anything, so if I go to my effects and I want to add in, you know, this broadcast safe thing, it will pop up here and then it will give me more options to adjust that specific effect. The next option over here, the triangle, this is color correction and I have mine going to color wheels, but you can also see a color board. We're gonna talk all about this in the editing process. And then the eye is just info about a clip. This is very helpful if you wanna make notes on something or you just wanna check something. What I use this for is checking the resolution and frame rate of a clip, especially if I'm working with unfamiliar cameras or somebody else's footage and I wanna see, you know, did they film it in 4K? Did they film it at 24 or 30 frames a second? And now that we have clips in our timeline, I want to point out some of these controls right here, these skimming and, and snapping options. Snapping basically means, are we going to let this playhead right here, the thing that we move to see where we're at in the project, are we going to let that dictate how clips work? So for example, right now I have snapping turned on. I do usually leave it on. If I drag this clip over, you'll probably see it sort of just snaps right to that playhead. I don't have to try to line it up perfectly, it just does that. It also means if I'm trying to line up clips, the clips will automatically snap themselves right to the beginning, so I don't have to worry if these are perfectly aligned or not. I know they're just right aligned on the same thing. So that's what snapping does. It's pretty helpful. The headphone icon lets you solo an item. So what that basically means is, you know, if you just wanna see or hear something, you can select that. You can hold down command and select multiple items and then click on that, and it's going to essentially mute everything else in your project except for those specific things that you have selected. And then what skimming means, as you see, as I'm moving my mouse over this clip, it's scrubbing through the clip. There's audio and video skimming. So if I turn off video skimming, now that's not happening. I'm moving my mouse around the timeline and nothing is changing. I have to actually click where I want to see something. If I turn on skimming, now you'll see it's, you know, it's skimming through and scrubbing through. I love turning skimming on. The next one is audio skimming. So if I turn this on and I start skimming through, you're going to hear all of the audio. I do usually leave that on when I'm editing a project, but I'm turning it off for the sake of now, because while you're watching me edit, it would be very annoying if every time I moved over the timeline, 
there was garbled audio coming through. So it's up to you if you like that or don't like that. I like it on normally, leaving it off for now just to protect everybody's sanity. And then depending on your screen, your setup, or your preferences, you can use this little icon here to change how things appear. My setting right now is the default setting, and it is what I like, but you can change this to you know more emphasize the the video clips and de-emphasize the audio. You can overemphasize the audio. You can sort of just change how things are displayed and adjusted within your timeline just to suit your needs. It's all just personal preference. There's no right or wrong when it comes to that. So those are pretty much the basics of Final Cut Pro and how it works and how the tools work. If you forgot some of it or it doesn't make a lot of sense, don't worry because we're going to be going over everything as we actually put our project together throughout the rest of the sections in this course. But I just wanted to make sure if you're editing along with me and you open up Final Cut Pro, it's not just this huge mystery what all these windows are and what all these controls are. So those are the basics and now, now we're ready to jump in and actually start creating and editing our project. Super excited for that. So let's head over to that section and get started.